If you wish to be inspired in life, what do you need to do? Bring the proper reason to do your best. But even that is not the end of the story. Why? Many times we have a strong reason and yet we don't do the thing. Why? We all know that we should eat well, we should not overeat, we should eat the right diet, right? And yet we don't do it and end up eating the ice cream and the chocolate. We have the reason with us, still we don't do it. What is missing? If you wish to motivate and fuel yourself in life, you have to give a big reason for this. What is the reason? But even that is not the end of the story. Why? Many times we have a strong reason and yet we don't do the thing. We all know that we should eat well, we should not overeat, we should eat the right diet, right? And yet we don't do it and end up eating the ice cream and the chocolate. We have the reason with us, still we don't do it. What is missing? It's not just a question of having the knowledge. It's a question of keeping the knowledge in your intellect. See, the intellect is like a vessel. Everything you hear, everything you see and read comes in the intellect. It's got 50 kinds of knowledge. What Swamiji said came in the intellect. What the atheist Richard Dawkins said, that also came in the intellect. And what the editor of the New York Times, Sam Harris, said, that also came in the intellect. Now, what your intellect picks up, that knowledge becomes activated. So, you have to activate the knowledge. Like, for example, the parents say, Swamiji, our son doesn't study, he will my child doesn't study, please explain something to him. Are he is your child, you explain. He doesn't listen, Swamiji, what will I do? All right, beta, why don't you study? Uncle, my mind doesn't like to study. Big problem. Mind doesn't like to study. So mind doesn't like to go to the book. Mind likes to go to the video game. What to do? That's why I don't study. But the same child, when he or she goes to the final exam, the year-end exam, now the question paper is there, the child is sitting in the exam hall, there are three hours to answer that question paper, the ten questions. Now the child brings the mind to focus and starts answering with razor-sharp attention. There is no distraction, not looking at the neighbor, not peeking out of the window, not thinking of movies and cricket or whatever. It's just the question and the best possible answer. He keeps that focus for full three hours. At the end of three hours, the teacher says, time up, give me your question paper. Pulls it out. Look, this child developed such focus. That kind of focus, if he had maintained through the year, he would have become a national scholar. 
but through the year he was not able to do it and all of a sudden he managed to do it that means the ability to focus was there the inspiration was needed how did the inspiration come when the intellect decided these 3 hours are most important now if i am careless i will lose the whole year all my classmates will go ahead i will not get that university admission which i want once the intellect decided it controlled the mind so the intellect has such power in it that you bring the right knowledge to your intellect and you can pull the mind the mind doesn't have the ability to resist a resolved intellect let's say somebody gives you a cup and you become convinced there is poison in it even on being tempted by a million dollars you will not be willing to drink you have controlled your senses are it is a cup of nectar take it no if i drink it i will die i don't want it your intellect is telling you that there is poison here so it's all a matter of bringing the right knowledge to your intellect if you wish to be inspired in life what do you need to do bring the proper reason to do your best and keep that knowledge in your intellect you may have heard the story of sant eknath he was a saint from maharashtra and somebody came to his house and said maharaj man nahi lagta my mind is so fickle and scattered i am not able to bring it in sadhana i sit in the morning for puja but the mind runs in the world and i take the name of god but the mind is thinking of beta beti and i do the aarti but the mind is thinking what is the price of potatoes today so baba ji please tell me how to control my mind sant eknath said you are talking about controlling the mind what i am seeing is you are going to die in 7 days he said really a saint is telling me from his lotus mouth that i am going to die in 7 days maybe his trikal darshi maybe he saw into my future who knows are maharaj this is a big terrible news you have given me what do i do now please help me mahatma ji said look don't worry so much 7 days is a period you just resolve free yourself from all the encumbrances and come to me on the 7th day uncluttered i will tell you what's to be done now when he went back with this knowledge i have only got 7 days to live his whole perspective changed now it doesn't matter if i've got 7 days to live it doesn't matter whether obama care remains or it is repealed because i am going to go if i've got 7 days to live it doesn't matter whether nasdaq goes up or it doesn't and it obviously doesn't matter whether the neighbor has got a bigger car or smaller car because i am going to leave my car in any case so his mind became calm and relaxed on the 7th day he went maharaj today is my last day tell me what should i do mahatma ji said 
are you able to think of god today he said maharaj today my mind is only in god it's not wavering from there sant eknath said you know why because your intellect is thinking today may be my last day that is motivating you so he said every day when i get up i think if today was my last day what should i do i lead every day as my last day and then i become inspired uh, that is the way to inspire yourself you think if this is my last day then what should i do one poet saint narayan said do baatan ko bhuli mat jo chahasi kalyan if you want kalyan or welfare don't forget two things which two things we don't forget god that everybody knows we should not forget god he says narayan ik maut ko duje shri bhagwan first remember your death then remember god otherwise you will say there is god but i am still not motivated and when you remember your death you'll think that now i need to put in my best so now the science of motivation we've got to the bottom of it what is the science of motivation find a strong reason and keep that reason fresh in your intellect people say swami ji how to get inspired in my sadhana i say you know you can inspire yourself in a flash it doesn't take much just bring the right knowledge why do people become uninspired the knowledge slips out when you listened to swami ji's lecture the knowledge became fresh yes 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 i must do bhagavat prapti this human form is precious and after the lecture is over three months have gone by the knowledge has slipped out back to square one right so it's a question of what knowledge you keep in your intellect some people ask me swami ji what is the source of your motivation because sometimes when they go to the jk yog website and there they go on to the upcoming events and then they see that swami ji is constantly preaching in one city or the other or the other or the other they say how many cities do you visit in a year i say about 60 70 how many houses do you stay in in a year i say about 180 my god what is your motivation i was taught the science of motivation when i was a young man from my guru kripalu ji maharaj he had called me to his ashram to teach me all the scriptures and then he said that after the your studies are complete you i want you to go and distribute this knowledge for the benefit of others so i had no past experience in speaking in the public and since it was going to be important for the service i would be doing i thought i may as well practice to speak as well only problem is in the ashram there used to be 15 people there was no public so i tried to give a lecture to the wall in my room ever tried to give a lecture to a wall it is most demotivating because the wall will not even respond with a smile or a nod that yes you said a good point and well done or whatever i found it quite difficult then finally i went up to kripalu ji maharaj and i said maharaj ji can you please depute some ashram vasi some resident of the ashram who can just sit and listen to my lecture for 2 hours every day i'll practice every day Now the problem was that everybody was busy in the ashram there was nobody was free to take out 2 hours 
so he used that as an opportunity to teach me a lesson of life he said look my son remember carelessness doesn't come from the outside carelessness comes from the inside it all depends on what knowledge you keep in your intellect sayat kamo bhavati tat kratur bhavati yat kratur bhavati tat karma kurute yat karma kurute tad bhi nishpadyate if you keep the proper knowledge you will develop an intense aspiration when you have an intense aspiration you will make a firm resolve when you have a firm resolve you will put in determined effort when you put in determined effort that is how you will become and if you don't keep the proper knowledge you will not develop the intense desire to serve or to grow or whatever and when you don't have that intense desire your resolve will be weak so your effort will also be lukewarm and that is the result which you will get so when he explained that i said now it is guru agya now i have to do it so the next time i said all right now no carelessness from inside and i found that i could give a full lecture to the wall after that it became a daily effort then i was giving lectures to trees and next to the ashram were corn fields i would go and give lectures to the corn fields or the cows that were grazing there or the canal that was going by i could give lecture to anything why the mischief of the mind had been removed by a simple tweak of knowledge so how do i motivate myself i just keep the proper knowledge in the intellect what is the proper knowledge this human form is very rare the soul is on a journey it has had many lifetimes before it will have many lifetimes until it is with god and it is passing through 8.4 million species of life there is no guarantee that we will get the human form next time again kab hum kari karuna nar dehi deta is binu hetu sanehi once in a while the soul by god's special grace gets the human form in other words don't think that you can take it for granted next life again you will become a human there is no such guarantee from god's side if you have spent all your life sleeping God says the human form is not suitable for you. You become a polar bear and sleep for 6 months. If somebody cultivates the consciousness that eating is the most important activity for me. In America they have this people called foodies, right? So if if you decide that I'm a foodie, God says all right, then next time I'll make you a pig so that you can keep on sniffing and eating all day long. This human form is not meant for eating, sleeping, mating, defending alone. These activities the animals are also doing. God has given the human form for something special. As George Bernard Shaw had said, life devoted only to life is animal without any human value. for life to be truly human it must serve some higher purpose such as god truth and divine beauty so god has given us a special gift in the human form and this gift will not always remain why because we will soon find it being snatched away 
in the shape of death there is only one thing which is sure in life and that is death as they say dead sure when something is truly definite they say this is dead sure because death will surely happen this life is a veritable dead end like the kaldi sack is a dead end right so is this life so the golden chance we had will be snatched away it is been given to us not permanently but temporarily realize the value of it and utilize the opportunity to the maximum whatever best you can do try and do it because the opportunity may not remain tomorrow avasar bityo jat are mana kripalu ji maharaj says oh my dear mind the golden chance that came your way is passing away and you are unaware you are just wasting time people retire what are you doing uh, to spend time i am playing cards is this the utilization of the human form your attitude should be your real life begins after retirement that's what i always tell retired people earlier you had so many distractions now you have only one work to engage in devotion to god and to serve him but it's a question of realizing the specialty of the human form and the golden chance it has bestowed upon the soul if you are unaware of it your life will be wasted just like this fisherman wasted his good fortune The fisherman got out of his house early morning to catch the fish. He walked to the stream. It was yet dark, the sun had not risen. He thought, let me wait a while until it becomes light enough for me to cast my net into the water. So to while away his time, he sat on the river side on a boulder with his feet in the water under his feet he felt there was a cloth when he put his hand it seemed like a bundle out of his curiosity he picked it out and he realized there was a bag in his hand casually he put his hand into the bag and he felt that there were some round polished objects he thought it must be a pebble of the stream so he took out one pebble and chucked it into the water when the pebble entered the stream it created a pleasing sound plop that was exciting to his ears so he decided to repeat it he took another pebble and threw it into the stream again the plop gratified the sense of hearing he did it a third time until he had thrown 24 pebbles from that bag into the water now the last pebble was in his hand when he took it out he chucked the bag it had become sufficiently bright enough for him to see so he cast a glance what is in his hand he was stunned in his hand was a priceless jewel he said what god gave me 25 such gems and in my ignorance i threw away 24 of them 
how unfortunate i am but in my opinion he was still fortunate he got one jewel his way we human beings are in the danger of being less fortunate than him because more precious than those jewels is the gift of the human form without realizing its importance we waste it away fritter away and then at the end of life regret marne ke din nikat tab जीने का ढंग आया जब ज्योति बुझ चली तब महफिल में रंग आया मन की मशीनरी ने तब ठीक चल न सीखा जब बूढ़े तन के हर एक पुरजे में जंग आया मरने के दिन निकट तब जीने का ढंग आया सो द वे टू इंस्पायर योर सेल्फ इज टू वैल्यू द गिफ्ट ऑफ द ह्यूमन फॉर्म एंड टू रियलाइज इट इज टेम्प्ररी देर बाय यूटिलाइज एवरी मोमेंट जुडिशियसली द वेदा से न श्व श्व उपासित को ही पुरुषस्य शो वेद डोंट एंड एवर स्लोली इंस्पायर योर सेल्फ एंड पुट इन योर बेस्ट एफर्ट्स सो गेट द प्रॉपर रीजन वाई आई नीड टू पुट इन माई बेस्ट एंड कीप दैट नॉलेज इन योर इंटेलेक्ट टू बी इंस्पायर्ड This is the third mindset for success.